Welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. And you're probably wondering where my review of Miss Marvel Episode 2 and Cha Cha Real Smooth are, because I said I was going to have both of those up uh, yesterday. Um, I did not watch Cha Cha Real Smooth last night. I was um, tired. Um, and I fell too deeply in, down the rabbit hole of Stardew Valley, which. If you've ever played Stardew Valley, you know that's a particularly deep rabbit hole to fall down, um, if that is something you are into. Um, so, yeah, I fell, I fell down that yesterday, and then, uh, ended up not, uh, what's it called, not, you can't just wait for me to, there's no one behind me, motherfucker. Um, that's a particularly deep, uh, rabbit hole to fall down. Um, so... I ended up not watching that. And then I did record an episode about Miss Marvel, but I figured it'd probably be better if I went to, if I rewatched the episode a second time and did it again. Um, also, it was only like 10 minutes long, and I recorded it, um, and I don't think it came out that good. So I'd rather hold off and, and do it the proper way than do it the wrong way and have it not come out right, if that makes sense. Um, so, it's whatever. Um, we'll re-record that tomorrow on my way into Manhattan. That's what we'll do. Um, so I'm going in tomorrow to see, uh, I'm going to the New York Independent Film Festival, New York City Independent Film, New York City Indie Film Festival, I think is what it's called. Um, now, do I think that, uh, I, I'm going there, I'm going to be seeing, um, what's it called? Uh, three shorts. Um, I'm trying to... My hope is to get a uh, interview with uh, some of the people involved uh, with making these shorts. Um, I can't guarantee that's going to happen, but, you know, that's the goal. See, and motherfuckers like this are, are the problem, where it's like you're trying to get into traffic instead of just, you know, going in the right spot in the first place. Um, I can't guarantee that, but I'll be talking about the three shorts that I see um, after I see them. This, uh, this coming weekend. And this motherfucker in the Elantra feels the need to... Okay, we can go now. The ambulance has passed. I have to sit here all fucking day just in case someone else comes. And I think there's a real problem with the stretch of road is that there's always fucking emergency vehicles on it. Um, so. What are we here for? We are here to talk about Lightyear. Um, which is... Um the latest Pixar movie, considering earlier this year we had Turning Red, and I think if there was a movie out of the two that was better suited for a theatrical experience, um, it's probably Turning Red. Um, so, but let's dive into what this movie's problems are instead of talking about what the other movie did well instead, because I think that that's an important thing to differentiate. Now, in this movie, here's the thing, this is the second Buzz Lightyear movie, um, of the, what's it called, of the, uh, that they've made, a second, like, standalone Buzz Lightyear movie, because there was 2000's Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, which was the, I think it was a, a direct-to-VHS movie, 2D animated, that served as a lengthy, feature-length backdoor pilot for the TV show that would be on Toon Disney. Maybe it's just nostalgia. Maybe it's the fact that I loved that movie as a kid, and my brother loved that movie as a kid, and we watched it so much that we wore out the tape from watching it so much. Maybe it's just that. Maybe it's, you know, I can look back on it and say, uh, that was my, what's it called, that was a movie that I really liked. And maybe it is just that, that I think that that movie is better than this one. Um, but I think that that one is better. This movie... Here's my problem with this movie. The movie, as it's portrayed, the conceit of the movie is that this mo this one that we saw here came out in 1993. Um, and, okay, I, 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 can un I understand that. A lot of what's in this movie feels very modern and not like it is a product of its time, a.k.a. it came out in 1993. And it's like, look, I get it. I totally get what the what that's saying. 
but there are things in this movie that don't exactly, you know, gel with that era. Like, the, the conceit around time travel in this morning, and I'm gonna put a spoiler warning in, because I'm gonna spoil the fuck out of this movie, but, you know, the way that Zerg is portrayed in the movie as future buds come back in time to try and undo everything, like, the... The way it's portrayed seems like it's written by someone out of practice in writing time travel as it was portrayed up until very recently. Um, Because in the past, time travel, as popularized by, like, Back to the Future, which was not a terribly old movie when this movie allegedly would have come out under the conceit of the movie, um, would have been a pretty straightforward thing. It, it, It feels like people are so focused on the multiversal aspect of time travel as it's portrayed in in pop culture now that I feel like people are in it's totally different kind of in a way um what else was there um there is this um um let's see there is like I don't think there's anything about this movie either that would have, at the time, because it's like, we can't take it as, like, that's part of the problem, is that it's like, this was a movie that started a toy craze in the way that Star Wars did in 1977, or Star Wars did in the 90s, or, you know, like, I'm trying to think of another movie more modern that caused a toy craze, or like, Tickle Me Elmo, um, and again, in 1993, if that were the case... I think Socks would have been the breakout toy, not Buzz Lightyear. And yeah, we can explain it away where it was the Tickle Me Elmo of the of 1993, but it still feels like the toy that would have been the one to beat would have been that. Um, a lot of it feels like explanation for Buzz's behavior in, in Toy Story, like, the arrogance and all of that is, that's his character arc in this movie, is that he's an arrogant prick and needs to relearn that, but because he needs to learn humility in Toy Story, we're retreading the same ground, because it's like, why is the toy act like this? Because that's the character it's based on. So if it's going to act like the toy, it's gotta act like, it it just kind of makes sense a little bit. Like, what else was there? There is this, you know, the... The idea that, like, um, what's it called? Uh, fuck, um, the, the idea of all of that being the basis of Buzz's behavior, Buzz's behavior, I feel like kind of makes it where we're retreading, we're, we're retreading the same character arc here. We are, um, we're, we're doing the same story that we already did, where it's like, he needs to learn that he needs to work as a team. He, and I think it's too, it's like it's the same thing as what's it called? As the uh, as the other movie, where it's he needs to learn to work as a team. He needs to learn that he cannot work alone. And it's, it's kind of that same thing. Um, and again, we're doing this as an animated movie, and I totally respect that they're doing it as an animated movie, because it's Pixar and that's what Pixar does. But I feel like this movie could have done more in terms of animation because watching this movie, there's nothing about it that screams that it it would need to be animated. Like there's nothing about it that screams both of these things need to be together. Both of these things need to, you know, um, what was I saying? I totally blanked. I'm very tired today. Uh, I don't know if they can tell that. Um, there's uh, nothing about this screams that it. I forgot. I forgot totally where I was going. Um, what was I saying? Um, and, and I feel like a lot of the Easter eggs don't really, you know, land. And it's like, okay, so they're giving the explanation for where all the catchphrases uh, come from. But at the same time, a bunch of them aren't in the movie, which feel like uh, something that could happen. Oh, that's what it is. It feels like the, the movie doesn't feel like it should be animated. It, 
it needed to be animated. Like, in a world where we're seeing things on a grander scale, doing more things with science fiction with aliens, um, in, in, what's it called, in, in movies, I feel like this movie didn't necessarily need to be animated, um, to, to get that same thing. I don't know where I'm both from. But, I feel like there's definitely a better, see, the problem is I've been trying to, if I'm coughing, or sneezing, or taking a drink, pause my recording, so that way that doesn't get picked up, but then you end up where I forget my train of thought. Um, so, the idea that this movie, like, needed to be animated, like, do more, um, and then, like, everything, like, it feels like, you know, this is the movie that Andy saw and fell in love with, and, and this is great, it, all that's great, but everything about Buzz, as we know him, doesn't come in until the next movie. Like, besides the arrogance, like, the suit with the jetpack and the le- and the laser, that's the very last shot of the movie, is that, okay, so now he's got this laser on his wrist, okay, now he's got the jetpack, because those are both things he happened into over the course of this movie that came in handy, that's like, hey, if we're gonna make new suits, let's put these on. Um, what else was there? Um, I feel like there, like there was more to be had with this movie. Like, there's, there's just, it, 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 and also the fact of the matter is, it's a very slow moving movie, and it's not the kind of thing that I think would have grabbed attention in 1993. Like, I mean, perhaps I have to go back and look at what other movies came out in 1993 that were more family oriented. Like, in a world where like Aladdin and The Lion King would have been around the similar era, the idea that you know, Lightyear is going to be this movie, um, I, I don't think it really, you know, works in that way, like, I don't think that Lightyear would be a movie that would catch on, where the entire mission is, I want to get off this planet and back to Star Command, like, the fact that that's the entire plot, it's not, you know, the stakes are small, which is okay, I'm not saying the stakes are, are need to be tremendous, but there needs to be some urgency to it, um, and I also don't buy the friendship by the end of the movie, um, like, I don't buy that they have gone through this arc together, and now they're all friends, and they've come to trust them, uh, it feels like, again, it's, it's plot convenience, like, the plot demands that these people have all become friends at the end, so we're going to, we, that needs to happen by the end of the movie, if it doesn't happen by the end of the movie, then, you know, the, the plot will be unfulfilled, so that needs to happen. If that doesn't happen, the movie kind of falls apart, which is, you know, fundamentally a problem, I think, at least. Um, so, like, there isn't enough time. And, and the amount of time in the beginning of the movie spent establishing Buzz and, you know, the grandmother Hawthorne, I forgot her name, uh, Alicia, I think her name was, but the amount of time spent with that and, and them developing out that relationship... Um, ultimately doesn't do too much because where does it because that character inevitably ends up dying I mean all it does is propel the plot but we spent a good amount of time doing that if you cut it and you did it more like the trailer made it seem like they were doing where it's like he gets them stuck he goes out on the mission he's gone for a century and then he comes back if you did that it would work better Um, because then what would happen is you end up with this, it's not this weird, um, what's I'm looking for here? Um, it's not this, um, this feeling that this needs to happen because the plot demands it. It is, it becomes a, um, it, it gives you a chance to develop him with these characters, have him develop a relationship with these characters that's not specifically him helping them out in situations, um, and, and that kind of thing would help the, the whole thing move forward, in a way, um, the, the whole thing would, it, it would help, it would help create the situation where we feel like by the time we reach the end of the movie, these characters deserve this arc, and they deserve to be friends, like, again, the 2000s version of the movie did that a little bit better, um, and that's not getting into the, you know, 
the other issues that, uh, I mean, like, it's one of those things that, like, it kind of caught me, where it's like, I, I think that if this movie came, it, it didn't get me as bad as The Matrix did, where The Matrix kind of caught me and was like, oh, that's, you know, something that wouldn't be, like, I know what a video game in 1999 looked like, and they did not have photorealistic, um, graphics, like the first Matrix did, and then they are alleging the first Matrix movie was a video game for the sake of this. Um, like it didn't catch me to that degree, but like I'm, I have no problem with the with the, uh, the 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 two women kissing. No problem with that. I'm just saying that like today, people are still pissy about that. That it's virtual virtue signaling that it's, it's people, that it's, it's, it's trying to shove propaganda down our throats, that it's, you know, it's that, um, and it is, you know, kind of, you know, it is a better environment than it was almost 30 years ago when this movie allegedly came out, according to the conceit of the movie. Um, we are, you know, things are better, they're still not perfect, but they are certainly better than they were back then. I, especially considering that Philadelphia, like, allegedly, this movie would have come out the same year as Philadelphia. And Philadelphia was considered kind of a watershed moment for the acceptance in, you know, not just in mainstream, but in, 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 in movies of gay people. Um... And I'm not saying it's bad to put the kiss in. I'm saying that if you're going to say this movie came out in 1993, it doesn't quite jive with the political environment of 1993. Um, and and I, I feel like, look, if you want to do that, that's fine. But we're not talking about did gay people exist in 1993. We're not talking about, you know, any of that. We're talking about was the political environment such that a major mainstream child... Folk, like a movie designed for kids could feature that without someone being like what are you fucking nuts and them not releasing it like that scene got cut this year and after outcry had to be reinserted into the movie and that's 30 years after the movie came out in the context of the movie um and it just feels like one of those things where it's like I, I feel like that's something where that would be... That would have been left on the cutting room floor in 1993. And, and, and the thing is, too, again, we're talking about this problem with Disney's representation. It's not even great for representation because, once again, Disney puts in these things, but they're so minute that you can remove them from the movie with minimal effort. Or because they're not editing them for foreign markets and they're making these big pontifications about not editing them for foreign markets, and I realize that I'm probably not going to get any more screeners from Disney because I'm doing this, but, you know, if, if they're going to do this and they're going and they're going to do it, like, commit. Like, you're, if you're not releasing a, a sanitized version of this movie for, you know, for for middle America who gets so incensed about it um, and to the point where you're, you're creating talking points... Um, for for uh, for certain people to go on the news and scream about, like if that's what you're doing anyway, and you're and you're doing this, just commit fully. Don't don't make it this thing that's so easily removed from the context of the movie that it, it has no lasting impact. Um, that that it's like, well, what's the point? It's like someone pointed out with uh, what's it called, with um, um, what was that other one? Uh, kids, um, with, uh, uh, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, they had the first gay kiss in The Rise of Skywalker, and, and this kiss in question is, um, two women, um, during the celebration after the battle on Exegol, because they both survived, they were married, whatever, and they, they kiss, um, it is on scene, on screen for two seconds. If you blink, you will miss it. Uh, that's not an exaggeration. That's not me being difficult. That is exactly what it is in the movie. Now, there is a, a space slug that has longer screen time during that same thing. 
this isn't a character that everyone knows. It's not a well-developed character that everyone's like, oh, this is awesome. That this guy's got screen time. It's not like Admiral Akbar or something like that. It is a space slug. Now, this space slug has longer screen time during that celebration than this kiss. Um, you can remove the scene, and, and you can cut um, Fastos's, um, his, his scenes, and that's omitted. Uh, and, and that's easy to omit. The, uh, in, in Onward, the, the character who, like, the cop lady who has, um, what's it called? Who, um, who's, who's married to a woman. It's one line of dialogue, otherwise you would not know she was married to a woman. Um, so, don't sit there and act like you're doing this great thing. Um, because you're not really, like doing what's it called you're not really doing what you are out there saying you're doing like i think that like tom hillison summed it up best when he did his thing about um about um loki being bisexual where it was done in such an ambiguous way that he's like if anyone caught that i hope it meant something to them and it's like unintentionally what he's saying here is exactly the problem where it's like it's so easy to miss and, and completely ignore i watched the show at least twice, and didn't catch it, until he pointed out, I was like, oh, now you see Loki's bisexual because of this, and I'm like, all right, sure, so, like, the thing is, like, they need to fix that problem, they need to stop with this thing where they're getting on this high horse about representation while not actually doing anything about it, and keeping them in such minimal roles that it might as well not be there, um, because that's the thing, is that it, it's not mentioned again after it's referenced that they're there. Like, it, it, and, and it's even put into the movie in a way where it can be cut. Um, but I think that the, the, the thing, like, all of that notwithstanding, the one thing that the movie really fails at is making you feel like these characters care about each other. I don't know. I mean, look, if we're going to sit here and we're going to punt, um, what's it called, the streaming, and we're going to punt... Uh, uh, Turning Red, or, yeah, Turning Red went to streaming, but this didn't. This is the movie that I think people would have been better off waiting to watch on streaming than watching in a theater, because it's the worst movie of the two. It's the worst Buzz Lightyear, you know, spin-off movie of the two. Um, and there are better things to see in theaters. Um, so, yeah, we'll wrap up there for today. We'll be back with Miss Marvel tomorrow. We'll be back with Cha-Cha Real Smooth tomorrow, and we'll be back with whatever else... I feel like doing, you know, and and some Im information out of New York uh, City Indie, uh, Indie Film Festival tomorrow, too. So until then, have a great rest of your week.